Welcome back to the AI Daily Brief Headlines Edition, all the daily AI news you need in around five minutes. There was a time, friends, not so long ago, when many of the big foundation labs were concerned with giving their models web access. And this was from a safety perspective. They didn't like the idea of their models being able to go out there and learn on their own. Well, now the lone holdout still operating under that paradigm has finally shifted because yes, after a long wait, Anthropic is finally adding web search to the Claude chatbot. Search has been one of the most requested features for Claude and is at this point completely de rigueur and standard for this competitive set. In their release blog post, Anthropic wrote, with web search, Claude has access to the latest events and information, boosting its accuracy on tasks that benefit from the most recent data. And indeed, this is possibly the most obvious press statement I've ever read on the show, but it is also telling about just how much this feature set is absolutely integral to actual functionality of these tools. Indeed, plenty of people had in the interim built their own workarounds to try to give Claude access to the web. But at this point, web search is here, and a whole new set of use cases are opened up because of it. Menlo's Didi Das writes, I'm never going to consume news the same way. Claude, generate me a detailed interactive website covering the ServiceNow acquisition of MoveWorks. It generated this insanely good report in around 60 seconds using the new web search. Consultants charge over 10K in four weeks for this. Now, one note here is, of course, that as every company has launched their version of deep research, Claude was cut out because it didn't have these capabilities. Some think this is a major competitive shift with, for example, the Archaeopteryx writing, with Claude now capable of web search, perplexity is cooked. I am not so sure about that, given that OpenAI has had web search for some time and perplexity remains a beloved product. And what's more, perplexity is not without resources to compete. Bloomberg is reporting that perplexity is in early talks to raise between 500 million and a billion dollars in a round that would see their valuation double to 18 billion. The company's Series D closed in December with the company taking in a half billion dollars at a $9 billion valuation. Now, it's no surprise that the company has their pick of the litter from VCs to raise a bunch of money, but is there any actual new information in the reporting? We do have a source saying that Perplexity's current annual recurring revenue is near $100 million, but this is still a pretty big cash pile. So what are they going to do with all that cash? Well, maybe we got a hint in this tweet from CEO Aravan Srinivas who wrote, Submit to this thread a list of things you found Manus AI to be really good at. We will make sure Perplexity is as good or better. Research tool today becomes general assistant tomorrow. Lastly today, NVIDIA is looking to bring a sizable portion of their supply chain onshore to the U.S. Speaking with the Financial Times, CEO Jensen Huang said, Overall, we will procure over the course of the next four years probably half a trillion dollars worth of electronics in total. And I think we can easily see ourselves manufacturing several hundred billion of it here in the U.S. These comments do seem like another tech company getting in line with President Trump's trade policy and the broader America First agenda. Huang did add, having the support of an administration who cares about the success of this industry and not allowing energy to be an obstacle is a phenomenal result for AI in the U.S. At the same time, this is a very strong endorsement of the efforts to set up domestic advanced chip making with the TSMC facility in Arizona. That plant was designed to be able to produce cutting-edge chips, including the latest Blackwell architecture from NVIDIA. However, it was not a foregone conclusion that NVIDIA would proactively move a substantial part of the manufacturing onshore. There were, I think, two ways to view the Arizona facility. One, it being primarily a failsafe to ensure that earthquakes or war in Taiwan wouldn't bring the USAI industry to a screeching halt. And of course, there was also a supply chain control angle, that bringing advanced chip making inside US borders allows greater control over chips for government and defense use. Commenting on all this, Huang said, the most important thing is to be prepared. At this point, we know that we can manufacture in the US. We have a sufficiently diversified supply chain. He continued, if any disaster were to threaten production in Taiwan, Huang said, it will be uncomfortable, but it should be okay. Never a dull moment. However, that is going to do it for today's AI Daily Brief Headlines Edition. Next up, the main episode.